Actually, the, uh, the thing I was really most pleased about, a couple of weeks after The Greatest Canadian, the Maclean's ran a poll of women across Canada and what male they would most like to be lost on a desert island with. <laughs> now, I have to admit, they were not given much choice. There was me and Jerome McGinley and Paul Martin and uh, uh, Peter Mansbridge and Ben Mulroney. I 45% of Canadian women chose me. Fifty-five percent of Alberta women chose me. It's got to tell us something. And the next highest person was Ben Mulroney at fifteen percent. So I kind of, when I heard that, I strutted around the house and I said to my wife, I must be pretty hot. And she said, David, women are smart. They know you know how to fish. You're a meal ticket. <laughs> Reality is hard to come crashing down to. Thank you very much for having me tonight. I was beginning to worry because Seth never asked me to do this and I thought, gee, you know, what, have I got leprosy or something? Why isn't he coming to me? I, I've been such a fan of the CCPA and watching Seth bring this organization to Vancouver and seeing the work, I've been really very, very impressed and well done. It's a great, great gang and I think very, very much needed and I congratulate all of you for coming out to show your support for this organization. We, we are at a pivotal moment in the history of life on this planet. I'm sorry that sounds very melodramatic, but I believe it's absolutely true. There has never been in the four billion years that life has existed on this planet, there has never been a single species capable of altering the physical, chemical, and biological features of the planet as our species is doing today. We have become a new kind of force on the planet that never has existed before. I call us a super species. For almost all of human existence on Earth, we were a local tribal animal. We may have met a hundred people in an entire lifetime and traveled within the confines of a few square kilometers. And that was our world. We were local. We didn't care what the tribes did on the other side of the mountain or across the ocean. But today, for the first time in human history, we now have to ask the question, what is the collective impact of all 6.4 billion people on the planet? We've never had to do that before. It's very, very difficult. Something remarkable has happened as well in the last hundred years. We've been transformed uh, for, into a different kind of, of creature. In 1900, there were only one and a half billion people on the planet. In 1900, there were only 16 cities with more than a million people. London was the largest city in the world with six and a half million people. Tokyo was the seventh largest city in the world with one and a half million people. The vast majority of humans were farmers. We were an agrarian village species. Cut ahead only a hundred years. Now there are six, more than six billion of us, but there are more than 400 cities with a million people or more. The 10 largest cities all have more than 11 million people. Tokyo is the largest city in the world in, in the year 2000 with 26 and a half million people. In a hundred years, they went from a million and a half to 26 and a half million people. And if any of you have ever been to Tokyo, you know human beings shouldn't have to live that way. But the point I'm trying to make is in, in a hundred years, we've been transformed from a village agrarian species into a big city dweller. And what happens in a big city is that we live in a human created environment where it's easy to adopt the illusion that we're different from the rest of life on earth. We're so smart we create our own habitat. Who needs nature? And I think this is where we get to, where we think we're so clever that what dominates our lives today is economics, that human created idea. The economy is the most important thing, and this is why 
uh, Lauren Taylor, the, the former Minister of the Environment in Alberta, said last year, environmentalists like Suzuki ought to understand if we don't have a strong growing economy, we can't afford to protect the environment. Now, there is what's happened is a complete inversion of reality. Where does Lauren Taylor, who's a vet for God's sake, he ought to know better. Where does Lauren Taylor think that our air comes from, our water, the soil that grows our food, and the biodiversity that sustains th this planet? But because we've been transformed into a city dweller, it's very easy for us to forget our biological roots and to think that we are a different animal. I, uh, the question is, how did we get to this point? And that's what I'd like to spend most of my time talking about. Biologists tell us that human beings appeared as a new species on the planet about 150,000 years ago in Africa. Now, I want to imagine that 150,000 years ago, scientists from a different galaxy discover life on Earth, and they they perched their rocket above the Rift Valley in Africa and looked down on those great savannas where life was flourishing. Now, if any of you have ever been to the Serengeti, you know what an amazing collection of creatures there are there. I would think you'd have to multiply that by at least 10 in order to get an idea of the diversity and the abundance. Back 150,000 years ago, there were mammoths. There were saber-toothed tigers and giant sloths. So try to imagine what those extragalactic visitors or scientists would have seen 150,000 years ago, looking across Africa, vast herds of mammals on the planet, wildebeest and gazelles and elephants and leopards and chimpanzees, and the rivers would be jammed with hippos and crocodiles and the air filled with birds. And if they looked carefully, here and there they would see small family groups, three, four, five, of these funny little two-legged apes without much fur running around, and that was us. I think 150,000 years ago, looking down, no one would have thought, watch those naked apes. They're the creature of destiny. They're going to take over the planet. I mean, what the hell did we have going for us? There weren't very many of us. We weren't very big. We weren't very fast. An elephant can outrun the fastest human on Earth. We weren't very strong. A chimpanzee weighing 100 pounds could beat the hell out of any one of us. Uh, we weren't gifted with sensory acuity. I mean, who could have ever thought that creature would have a destiny that we see today?